Mets in the Marlins tonight at City Field. First pitch 7-10 on SNY. Now we bring in our good friend who does the games on SNY with Keith Hernandez and Gary Cohen. It's Ron Darling. He joins us now on the show. Ronnie, it's Michael. How you doing? Hi, Michael. How you doing? All right. And Don's there as well. Oh, hi, Don. How are you? Good. <laughs> All right, so is Jacob DeGrom the National League Rookie of the Year? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I think, um, I look at it this way. Uh, Billy Hamilton plays every day. I can definitely see the argument. Uh, he's got, what, over 50 stolen bases. Um, and I think, honestly, I think he has had a great year. Uh, for a kid, he didn't know he could play center. He's been great in center. Uh, he didn't know if he could hit enough. He certainly has done that. Um, and he's been one of the bright, uh, not a lot of bright spots for Cincinnati. He's been one of them. But, you know, this kid, uh, and then going from last night, uh, has done historical things uh, as a Met, uh, as a rookie, and, and now as, uh, uh, you know, in, in baseball history. Yeah, and it seems like Hamilton's kind of leveled off where DeGrom seems to be raising his level. And I think if he wins it, Ronnie, last night is going to be a great example. Breaking the Mets record for consecutive strikeouts, tying the major league record. I mean, that's special stuff. And, and you wonder, Ronnie, why wasn't this more of a highly touted product, uh, uh, prospect by the Mets before this year? You know, Donnie, it's a great question. I think what happens sometimes is, you know, he had injuries. So uh, he's a little older than, you know, the young, young guns. Uh, so there's some maturity there uh, that he has that uh, the other, uh, you know, younger players might not have. Um, I think also you never know how a kid's going to come off of injury. And then third, and I think even more importantly, you just don't know until you have these kids in the major leagues whether uh, the, the eyes are going to be wide open like a deer in the headlights, or they're just going to uh, be smooth and cool and, and just execute. And so far, DeGrom has been the latter. Um, he's just been a, a, a great story. And, and uh, interesting enough, um, for me personally, doing the games, this has been one of the best seasons in a long time to do these games because of the emergence of Lagares, because of DeGrom. You know, Wheel is starting to find his way. So it's been a lot more fun for me. And, and the, the you know, whenever I do these games, Michael, you know as well as I do, you know, when you do historical games, when someone does something uh, that hasn't been done in a while or, or whatever, it, it makes it more special. This is the Baseball Insider Report. Ron Darling is our guest, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Brooklyn. So let, let's look at it from your expertise as a pitcher. What does DeGrom do well? Because his stuff, albeit very good, yeah. is not electric like Matt Harvey. So why is he so effective? <laughs> well, I, I think his stuff is a little more electric than we, we give him credit for, um, only because uh, uh, I've talked to the opposing hitters. And the one thing they've described about it, uh, I, I say, what makes him so tough? He said, late movement. And it goes both ways. So on his fastball, it'll sink on right-handers. It'll also cut away from right-handers. So uh, that is one of his strengths. Um, last night we saw it, fastball command. Rookie pitchers do not have fastball command. That's why they're rookie pitchers. It takes them a while to develop that. Uh, he's developed that as quick as anyone I've seen up there with Harvey. And then the other part of it, he just seems to go into a zone. He's kind of a, you know, by, by and I certainly don't know him, but outwardly by nature, he seems like a kind of a free spirit, a happy-go-lucky kind of a, a kid uh, when he's not pitching. Uh, but when he's pitching, he goes into this trance, this zone that, boy, it takes usually two, three, four, five years to learn uh, that part of the game. And he doesn't leave it. I mean, I watch him on the mound. He has a maturity. If I didn't know he was a rookie at it, I'd say he's mm -hmm. a four- or five-year player. By the way, not only holds his concentration, but even more importantly, when things get bad out there, which they always do to any pitcher other than Kershaw, um, you have to have uh, you have to take it up a notch. And so far, he's been able to, uh, to do that. Now, you know, he's a young pitcher. He's only made 21 starts in the major leagues. You know, it, you know, you got to hold some kind of judgment. But you know what? Uh, it's nice to get excited every once in a while. And he's athletic, too, which is something we don't see in pitchers all the time, whether they're diminutive in size like a Tim Lincecum or maybe a tad overweight like CeCe Sabathia. How can his athleticism, Ronnie, make him a better pitcher? Well, in a year that, uh, I don't know if, Michael, you've seen this, in a year that pitchers can't execute the uh, intentional walk, can't throw to first huh. base or to home plate, um, this is uh, 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 so welcome to watch. Not only can he, you know, in the National League, of course, with the pitcher hitting, um, he is uh, not an easy out. Um, he started numerous double plays this year uh, with great athletic skill. And it's a kid that uh, used to, 34 years ago, every pitcher 
came from the shortstop or third base or center field uh, position as a youth, and then um, because they couldn't hit enough, became pitchers. Well, he's uh, from that background, you know, college shortstop. He wanted to be an everyday kind of player. Didn't work out. Took the pitching, and uh, and the Mets are better for it. All right, let's talk more overview, Ron. And we're talking with Ron Darling of SNY. Um, this team is obviously improving, and if if um, Harvey can come back next year on the top of his game, it's a formidable rotation. But Sandy Alderson has come out in recent weeks and kind of said we're not raising our payroll. And I just don't know how you take that next step if you don't go from at least 85 to 110. If you stay at 85, how are you going to get better offensively in order to take the next step? Yeah, it's interesting, uh, uh, Michael. I, I've heard that same comment. It was almost like, well, you know, we will, you know, uh, invest more in the team if we have more people come to the team, uh, come to the games. Well, more people are only going to come to the games because the team wins. So uh, I don't know how you figure uh, that discrepancy out. But I will, I will say this: is that there's a couple of things that can happen. One you mentioned already, the pitching, starting, and not only that, the bullpen with Black, Familia, and Mejia, you've got some good power arms. So l- let's say the pitching is going to be solid. Uh, second, their defense, I think, is really solid. The Garris is as good as I've seen in center field in quite some time. Um, but there's two things that have got, have got to happen here. One, you've got to go get a couple of, bat, a couple of bats, or you've got to hope that a Dendecker or Newen Heist breaks out. You've got to hope maybe that uh, Dilson Herrera is the player they think he's going to be. Uh, but more importantly, in the bottom line, after all this is said and done, uh, that your best players always have to play – uh, the best baseball, and uh, David Wright and Curtis Granderson, um, who are paid accordingly, uh, have to have uh, bounce back years next year. If they don't have bounce back years, I don't know what you do when your best players uh, are, don't play up to expectations. Um, they're uh, you know supposed to be accountable for much of the offense. When they're not, it's hard for every team to find any offense. And another way to improve the team without necessarily spending money in free agency is to make deals. And yeah. how difficult it, will it be for Sandy to decide who's expendable, not just on this roster, but also the prospects? I thought SNY did a great job yesterday with Kevin Burkhardt interviewing all of the prospects that came to the game last night. I mean, just from a, a casual eye, wh- who are some of the, the pieces you think they can put together to maybe make a deal to get some offense? Well, if you, if you last night you saw uh, Kevin Flowecki, uh I interviewed if Travis Darno is the real deal. What's Flowecki going to do? You know, it's not going to find a, a place for him to play, so he might be part of it. Um, you know, Brandon Nimmo is a guy they say is coming fast. I, you know, I don't think he's going anywhere. I think the embarrassment of riches for them is in, in the young pitching. Uh, everyone in baseball needs it. Um, the only problem is, is that. You know, if you're a car collector and you got a Ferrari and Maseratis and, and all those beautiful cars out there, um, sometimes you want to hold on to all of them instead of getting rid of, of some. I think they've got to be able to scout their own guys, be able to identify who are those guys uh, that are not on the major league roster and guys that are um, who um, should be moved, uh, who have outlived uh, what they can do here, or the return is so great. Uh, that you have to kind of make a move. So I think you're right. Um, their strength comes in their pitching. Um, they're not going to have an eight-man rotation, so there's going to be some guys like Montero and others maybe that uh, might bring, uh, or Syndergaard, that might bring a, a real big hitter um, to the Mets. And, you know, that'll be something they'll have to identify this winter. But uh, they do need some more offense, um, especially if, if, if Wright and Granderson don't return to form. I'm interested to get your take on this, Ron. Uh, I, I've kind of changed my view. I used to hate the showboating, and then I realized that most people in the dugout don't care. I mean, Jabba, what he did, um, uh, Soriano, what he did, taking his shirt out after saves, stuff like that. you got Pineda pitching with his hat sideways like Hunt's Hall. What do you think of your closer? Terry Collins is trying to close, uh, you know, shut him down and the celebrations. Do you have a problem with the celebrations? Um, I, you know, I don't have problems when it is organic, Michael. The celebration just right. comes out of, uh, out of getting a final out and being uh, exhilarated that you did that for your team. I have no problem with that. I think the problem is that Henry's added, uh, added a new move <laughs> with, uh, with some saves. So I think, you know, uh, I mean, at some point, it'll be four or five minutes before we can do the closing uh, because of the move. So uh, I, I think that um, I, I don't have any problem with or, or organic. It just comes out of you. I played with Dennis Eckersley. 
uh, players in opposing dugouts couldn't stand his celebration. But when you played with him, you're like, well, but he wasn't that good. I, you know, I don't know. So I, I'm not against it. I just think that it should just organically uh, come out of somewhere. I think, too, uh, you know, we've seen it uh, hurt Rodney this year with the Angels, uh, giving them extra incentive. Um, I look at it this way. Um, baseball is a very difficult game. Everyone's going to be humbled at some point. I know young players are instructed by their agents to brand. This branding is important. Um, as, uh, you know, separate yourself from everyone else. But at the end of the day, um, respect for yourself, respect for your teammates, and respect for your opponent, I think, are very important. And the people that do that um, are, are the people we remember for a long time. Ronnie, Bud Selig's going to be in the booth during the course of the broadcast. He's making his farewell tour around Major League ballparks. What, what is, are you curious about? As the commissioner leaves, what are some of the questions you may ask him tonight? Well, uh, hopefully, I won't. Uh, well, you guys won't need a job after tonight. But uh, I, I think that uh, I think that it's important for us to ask him all the uh, difficult questions. I think uh, you know, if you want to look, uh, I always think of, of Bud as um, uh, the business of baseball. You know, he has covered uh, really well, you know, as far as revenues, TV contracts, licensing. You go through all the business of baseball. What I want to ask him moving forward is if he's going to have discussions with um, the incoming commissioner, Rob Manfred, on baseball as the game, not the business. And I'm talking about the time of game, uh, uh, the replay systems. We're certainly going to ask him about the collision play at home plate. Um, you know, i got to do uh, some postseason games, and I would like to have that kind of figured out or at least move a little quicker uh, because, um, you know, it could be, it could be an issue. Um, I, I think we're going to ask him, um, you know, what he thinks his legacy is uh, as commissioner as he's, uh, what, six months or so uh, uh, from leaving office. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's so many things that we can ask him. Um, you know, Michael travels. I travel a, a lot with the teams. Um, you know, the, the business of guys, uh, teams getting in it, six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning having to play that night. It just can't continue. Uh, if you want a good product uh, and you want to protect your athletes from injury, um, th that, that travel has got to be addressed. Now, I know that's an issue between the commissioner and the Players Association. I think the Players Association has dropped the ball on it, too, so they are culpable and have to talk about it. But there's, a, there's so many issues. I mean, I don't know how, how long we're going to have them. Wow. But there's so many things that uh, uh, I hope he'll be happy to discuss. Michael, Ronnie's prepared tonight, man. <laughs> yeah, he's got it all down. Uh, Bud better be careful. They better carve out some extra time. Uh, like, like and said, also, you know, if, if, we'll if Bud gets rid of you, Ronnie, if they force the Mets hand, you could be the third guy in the in the show. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you exactly. Get, but, but, if it happens, if it happens, I'd be happy to hang out with you guys. But you would have to do updates. That's the only caveat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. There's always a pecking order with the new guy. I get it. Uh, exactly. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, guys. Take care.